All right, what is introvert extrovert really? Would you be surprised if everybody out there has this wrong? What I mean by that is, if you go and try and objectively type people using the definitions you have online and have in all the books of what an introvert and an extrovert is, you're going to come across a large percentage of people where those sloppy ass definitions aren't going to work. And you're going to look at one person and go, "I think Sally's a introvert," and then your partner in the other room is going to look at Sally and go, "No, I think she's an extrovert." And who's to say who's right, right? So the first thing we had to get out of our big heads to make this work was the the very defining of terms introvert people and extrovert people is wrong. There are no introverted people. There's introverted functions. Now those introverted functions may be your savior functions, they may be your dominant functions, but that doesn't make you an introvert. They can make a large percentage of you introverted. How you view the world, take in information, make decisions, those could be introverted. But you yourself are not a introvert. You know what I mean? It's like calling somebody fast. I'm fast. Like fast at what? Talking, driving, reading. My legs are fast. Okay, you have fast legs. I'm introverted. Introverted what? Introverted decider. Oh, okay, I get it. So most people in function land already know this. Now take a look at our little brain map here. You got the thinking, feeling, intuition, sensing, and this is just the stock brain everybody comes with, right? I know. When you take the letter, we're going to call it letters, the T, the thinking side of your brain, and you give it an extroverted charge, that T becomes TE. Or you can give it an introverted charge, TI, introverted thinking. But everybody has T, and everybody has two functions that are introverted and two functions that are extroverted. That's it. So when you look at this thing here, letters plus introvert extrovert charge equal functions. And then those functions go into your function stack. The stack is in the order of which are the most dominant. Uh well, that's not quite technically accurate, but and then last little sub note, everybody has two observers, the S and the N and two deciders, the T and the F. How you view the world and then how you make decisions. And then if your T is extroverted, your F has to be introverted, the opposite side of that decider coin, and the same with the observers. All right, let's take a look at the Google pages just so we know how to do it wrong. Now, going through all the Google images and all the websites and all the pages, they're all copying and pasting the same crap from each other and it basically breaks down to this. The problem here is the same problem that critics have been saying of Myers-Briggs and all these personality types for years, and if you look at it, it's they're referencing like I'm not sure how to describe it, like skills. Like if you do this, then you're that. Like, okay, what if I also do this? Am I still that? What if I talk out loud? I'm talking out loud. Am I a extrovert? By the way, what is a extrovert again? So, it's just poorly defined terms on top of poorly defined terms, which is why Myers-Briggs is stuck in the pseudoscience bin. So, let's break these down a little bit. Uh the top line, introvert being alone, I want to get away from the tribe. Okay, that makes sense. That's like somebody who's self above tribe. Being around people, that's somebody who wants feedback from other tribe people. It's somebody with savior TE and FE. Okay, that makes sense. Uh thinking things through. I I don't know. I guess it sounds like somebody who's lead TI. Uh talking out loud again, somebody who's lead TE, maybe lead FE. They want to talk out their ideas to see if it's making sense to the tribe. Uh likes notice. You know, doesn't like surprises on this third line here. So let's go on the extrovert side. Likes surprises. Okay, this is somebody who does not have savior control. So they don't have the savior functions of SI or NI where they want to narrow down, organize, control. You can see these descriptions on the internet are kind of like fumbling around in the dark, vaguely kind of hitting large broad brush generalizations that if you step back and get the idea, you know what they're trying to say and it, it's it's kind of stereotypically true, but then as soon as you go to try and zero in and track any of this stuff, it completely falls apart. And then the last one, this will be way down the road in the classes here, but it's touching on uh modalities, you know, somebody who's a writer and somebody who's a speaker. The point is there's all sorts of moving parts going on inside of people. So to clump everything together saying all introvert, all extroverts like whoa whoa whoa. Half of that introverted list can apply to people that have an extroverted function at the top. Look at an EJ, your stock ESTJ. They like being around people, they have lead TE, they want feedback of people. Okay, sure. But then like surprises? No, they don't like surprises. Why? Because they have the human need of control. They have SI second. So they want to control and organize. They don't want new information springing into their face. So that's going to be a ready. Here comes another dumb word, an ambivert. Like, ah, when I first heard that, I'm like, ah, ambivert. And then, like, as you see what they're trying to say with the ambivert, is it's actually kind of true. They're kind of trying to say, look, people are kind of really a mixture of these two categories, and that's actually very true. There's a scientist guy that I follow and he's actually on your little resource list there, Donald Hoffman. I'll link the video um for anybody who's watching this on YouTube or wherever. And he runs simulations about life forms and giving life forms the ability to see all of reality or part of reality. And it's his really fascinating cutting work because he said that 
when they gave simulations, these little life forms, the ability to see all of reality, they died off. It was the little life forms that were able to see parts of the spectrum of reality. Then they would have their own different, unique way of survival of the fittest. In Donald Hoffman's work, he talks about, oh shit, I think that's what's going on with people. We're not really seeing reality. We're seeing these weird little spectrums of reality, and we're all kind of seeing different spectrums of each other. This is why the idiot people you live with, you can see all their bullshit, and they can't see it. Because you have different functions than them. They're probably introverted in one area, so they got their head up their ass, and they can't see all the other things that are coming their way. But you happen to have an extrovert function in that same area, and you can see what's coming. But then again, when you turn it around, you can't see your bullshit, but they can see yours. So the introvert-extrovert spectrum seems to be something about perceptions of reality. And almost, in, my, in my opinion, it seems to be the same amount of energy. It's just how it's dispersed. So here's like an image of like the whole spectrum of reality. And say an extrovert when it comes to, say, NE. So they can kind of see a broad range of abstract concepts and patterns on a lot of different topics. Or say it's SE. They can see the facts and take in new experiences and new understandings and new information from a lot of different areas on that spectrum. Somebody who has SI is just narrowing in on a small band on that spectrum with an intense amount of energy, the same amount of energy, but it's a focused in area. But then they're ignoring all the other physical things around them. And so again, like we talked about earlier, it's not that the narrowed in person can't see the extroverted spectrum. They can stick their head up and look around and see it just fine. They just don't have a lot of respect and energy for it because they're busy focusing on narrowing in. So it kind of becomes like a muscle imbalance, you know? All right, kind of pulling this all together. What is the definition of introvert and extrovert? And we've got it on your little paperwork there, but the basic idea is how does this relate to what I already accept? I'm already narrowed in somewhere on the spectrum of reality, many different spectrums of reality. On this spectrum, I'm just narrowed in on this. I want to know more about what I already know. An extrovert is how does this relate to the broader view of reality? The SE ones are usually pretty easy to see because like, you have these professional athletes, and what are they always doing? We're the best, we're number one, we're this, we're that, we did this, I did that. we were the first one ever to do this, this had never been done. Why do they talk like that? Because they're constantly viewing the spectrum of sensory things. So I know, it's supposed to be an easy video, it's just introvert, extrovert, how hard can it be, right? There's a lot here, don't worry, we're going to go over this again and again in repetition.